Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand the differences between an HDMI splitter and an HDMI extender, because both of these products use very sophisticated technologies that will help you easily solve all of your media connection issues, but they operate in very different ways, so it's important you understand when you may choose to use an HDMI splitter versus an HDMI extender. Now, I'd like to start off with a really basic understanding of the differences between these two products. Then I'll take a closer look at each of them and show you the connections you'll need to make to use them with your own equipment. I'll also come back and point out a few key differences to keep in mind when you're comparing an O-Ray product to others in the market, because O-Ray builds a lot of sophisticated advantages in their technologies you may not find in other products. So let's talk about the differences between these two products. An HDMI splitter is a very basic device, and its only function is to take the output from one media device and split that to two monitors simultaneously. So it allows you to enjoy the content from that media device on two separate monitors. Now that splitter is a local connection, and what I mean by that is you're limited with the cable length between the splitter and the monitors and the splitter in your media device, which is typically 10 meters for 4K video. So it's a local split of that media content that you can enjoy in two monitors, typically in the same room. By contrast, an HDMI extender takes that media device and allows you to share that with a remote location hundreds of meters away over a single cat cable. Now that's nice when you want to enjoy the content locally here and watch it on a local monitor as well as send it to a second location in your home so somebody else in an upstairs bedroom or downstairs in the den can enjoy that same content. So a local replication of that video, a remote replication of that video. Now if you stay tuned, I'll take a look at both of these products and again explain the connections you'll need to make to use them at home and then I'll come back and point out some key things to keep in mind that O-Ray does with their products that a lot of other companies in the market may not do. So stay tuned for the closer look. Most HDMI splitters are pretty simple and straightforward devices that typically provide one input port and two output ports as well as a power port. Now I have the O-Ray BK22 HDMI splitter here in front of me and all those connections are made in the rear of the product. And when I spin it around, you'll find one input port right here that's an HDMI connection and you'll connect this up to your media device to share the media between your two monitors simultaneously. You'll also find two output ports right here that are both HDMI, and you'll connect the cable from here to your two monitors where you'd like to enjoy that content. Now, what makes the BK22 so unique is that most of the splitters on the market can support 1080p content and maybe 4K content. This one can support up to 8K content and can also support 4K content at 120 frames a second or 60 frames a second, so it's a very sophisticated device. The other unique feature is you'll find two input ports. So whereas most splitters have one input port and two outputs, the BK22 has two input ports, which means you can connect the media device up here and a second media device up right here, and you can switch between those two inputs by tapping this button. So essentially what this product provides is both a splitter and a switch in one product. All HDMI extension kits include a transmitter module and at least one receiver module. The transmitter module gets connected up at your primary location where you're currently enjoying the content you'd like to share with that secondary location, and the receiver module gets connected up at the remote location where you'd like to enjoy that content. Now on most transmitter modules, there are three connections you'll need to make. There'll be an HDMI input port. That'll connect up to your media device that you'd like to share with that remote location. You'll also find a power port that provides power for the unit to operate, and you'll find a LAN connection here, which is the single connection between these modules where that media content is transmitted. Now, the same connections are on the receiver module. You'll find an HDMI output port right here that'll connect up to the monitor where you'd like to enjoy that content, a DC port for power, and the other end of the LAN cable plugs in right here to this LAN connection. Now, what makes this particular system from O-Ray so special is there are additional features built in. For example, on the transmitter side, you have the HDMI input port, which allows you to share it with that secondary location, but you also have an HDMI output port, which is called a loop out port, that allows you to enjoy the content here at the primary location while you're simultaneously transmitting it to the secondary location. You'll also find an infrared out port right here, and I'll explain that in a minute. On the receiver end, you've got an infrared in port right here, and that's used with the IR blaster kit that comes with this particular product. And what that allows it to do 
is that that receiver will pick up the remote control signals from your remote control in that secondary location and blend those into the media stream that's connected over that LAN cable between these two. And it'll actually rebroadcast it out of the infrared blaster on this end. So it allows you from that secondary location to control the content you're actually watching at this primary location. And that way you have complete control over your media content at that secondary location. And those are unique features that you want to look for if you're in the market for an HDMI extension kit. I hope you found those closer looks helpful, and here are a few things you can use when comparing these O-Ray products to others you may be considering. And a few of these specifications actually apply to both of these products, so I'll cover those first, but then I'd like to explain some of the additional features and functions that O-Ray has engineered into their HDMI splitters and their HDMI extension kits, which really help to separate these products from the competition. So the first thing to keep in mind with any media product you're considering is its HDMI compliance level because in large part that determines the type of media that product can support. So for example, this HDMI extension kit is designed for 1080p content. It allows you to extend that content up to 100 meters away over a single LAN cable and it's HDMI 1.4 compliant which is perfectly fine for that media style. On the other hand, if you need to support higher resolution content, maybe 4K or 8K, you need a device like this splitter that's HDMI 2.1 compliant, and that can handle those higher resolutions. Now the challenge is, when you're shopping for a device, if you buy one that has a lower HDMI compliance rating, you won't be able to handle those higher resolutions later on. So my recommendation is always find a product that has a higher HDMI rating than you need today, and that way you know as you upgrade your media devices and your monitors, that whatever device you've purchased can stay in your media gear, and you won't have to worry about upgrading it. Now the next thing to check for is the copy protection level and that's defined as HDCP because all modern media content from 1080p up to 4K up to 8K has copy protection built into it and the higher resolutions have even more sophisticated copy protection built in. So whatever device you've got, you've got to check that HDCP compliance rating. With 1080p content, this device is rated for HDCP 1.4 again, which is perfectly fine for that. When you get into higher resolutions, it's a more sophisticated copy protection. So this product is HDCP 2.3 compliant, which will handle 4K and 8K content, so you're set there. And that's important because, again, if you buy one that has a lower HDCP content rating, you're going to have problems playing that higher resolution content. The last thing to consider, which kind of falls in those two categories, is the resolution and the frame rate the product can support, because a lot of products in the market talk about being 4K compatible, but they're at 30 frames a second. So if you're going to be passing 4K at 60 frames a second, or even 8K content, you want to make sure that the device you're considering can handle that level of media. So always check the resolution and the frame rate of the device you're considering to make sure that it's compatible with your media. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the additional features. What O-Ray did with the splitter at a very basic level was build a device that could take a single media stream and split it to two monitors. So you could actually enjoy it on both monitors at the same time. The enhancements on this is it handles 4K and 8K content. It'll handle 4K content at 120 frames a second, 8K content at 60 frames a second. So it's compatible with all the modern media devices that are out there. But they took it a step further and actually built a switch into the splitter. And what I mean by that is most splitters have a single input this one has a dual input, so you can have two media devices coming into this splitter at the same time, and by tapping the button on the front, you can decide which of those media streams is sent to both monitors at the same time. So it gives you the splitter function that allows you to enjoy the content on two monitors simultaneously, as well as a switch function built into the same device, and that can be really handy. Now, as far as the HDMI extender kit goes, O-Ray's built in pretty much everything you'll need to extend that content and control that content from a remote location. So when you're considering an HDMI extender kit, number one, make sure you've got the right resolution that it supports. The things I like about this particular kit are number one, it has power over cable, which eliminates a power supply at that remote location. So essentially what happens is you power up the transmitter and the power required for the receiver unit is sent over that same LAN cable that transmits the media up to that secondary location. And what that does is simplify the wiring, it eliminates a second power supply, it just makes things a whole lot easier. The next thing you want to look at is the type of connection between the transmitter and the receiver. A lot of these require very sophisticated LAN cabling between them. Most of the O-Ray products have a wide range of LAN cables you can use, either a CAT5, CAT6, or CAT7. They're all specified based on the resolution you're going to pass through that connection, but make sure you check that. One thing that's really special about the O-Ray product, in addition to what I've discussed already, is the ability to strip the audio from the media stream you're passing along. And that can be handy because a lot of times you don't want to listen to the audio through the speaker on that monitor in the secondary location. So being able to strip the content from the audio and then pass that audio along to a home stereo system or a soundbar can really improve the audio quality. 
Another nice feature that's built into the O-Ray product is the local loopback functionality because that allows you to essentially watch the content here at the primary location while you're simultaneously broadcasting it to the secondary location. A lot of competing products in the market don't allow that local loopback, which means if you're using this in your media room, you can only send that content to the second location. You lose the ability to enjoy it here at the same time. So local loopback is important. The final feature I want to talk about is the remote control of the content. Now, the O-Ray kits include what are called IR blasters, which essentially pick up the remote control signals at the secondary location that you'll want to control your media content with and pass those back over the same LAN cable to the primary location, then rebroadcast to your media devices. So you can essentially, from the remote location, completely control the content you're watching at that primary location. And that's super critical because if you don't have that function, you basically start the media content, run to your second location, and start watching it, but you have no control over it. So all those features really separate this from a lot of the other products on the market. And that's pretty much all I had for today. So I hope you found this clip helpful. And until next time, thanks again for watching.